Hi everybody, let's go through another problem on the differential rate law. This one's going to be slightly more complicated because it's our first example of having more than one reactant. You can see here that we have uh, ammonium cation reacting with NO2 anion to form nitrogen and water. So this is our first example of having multiple reactants. When you have multiple reactants, you're going to notice that you need more experimental trials. In the previous problem, I had one reactant and two experimental trials. Here, I have two reactants and one, two, three experimental trials. It turns out to do this um, algorithm that an analyzes the, uh, the differential rate law, you tend to need one more experimental trial than you have number of reactants. I've got two reactants, so I need three experimental trials. You'll also notice now that this is our second uh, example that the data that is being used, the way the initial concentrations of, in this case, ammonium and the NO2 anion are set up, they're, they're done so in a clever way. You can see that we hold the concentration of ammonium cation constant between two experimental trials, and then we hold the concentration of NO2 minus constant between two experimental trials. This is a classic control experiment. This way, whatever change is occurring here in the rates between these two trials will solely be a result of whatever concentration changes happened between the NO2 from experimental one, uh, experiment trial one to experiment trial two because we've held the ammonium cation constant. Likewise, whatever happens between experiment two and three will solely be the result of the changes we did in the concentration of the ammonium cation. Now, I suspect some of you who kind of get the, the feel of this algorithm might be able to just look at the data and do these problems by inspection. But I'm going to go through and do the whole problem for you in some uh, gory detail. <clears throat> so you'll remember our first step is to always write down that rate equals the rate constant K times the concentration of each reactant and you'll notice here I'm multiplying <coughs> the reactants by one another and then each reactant is going to be raised to some as of no now unknown power and I guess maybe I'll use N and M so N is the order with respect to the NH4 plus M is the order with respect to NO2 minus so let's go ahead and um, take a look at the the ratio algorithm that I did last time and apply it to this particular problem. Now I'm going to go through it kind of quickly on the next couple of slides, so feel free to pause it as much. All right, so we've got our rate law here at the top that I've already written out, and I'm going to take the ratio of experiment 2 to experiment 1. That will mean then that I've got the rate of 2 to the rate of 1 is equal to the general rate laws of trial 2 to trial 1. Then I go ahead and plug in the actual data that was collected from the experiment. So 2.7 to the minus 7 is the rate from experiment 2. 1.35 to the minus 7 is the rate from experiment 1. I have my Ks still, <clears throat> and I plug in the actual concentrations of ammonium, NO2 minus from experiment 2, ammonium, and NO2 minus from experiment 1. And the same thing is going to happen as happened before. I don't know what K is, but it will factor out. And the 0.1 to the N's now will also both factor out. And so I'm left with the ratio of my rates to the ratio of the concentrations of NO2 minus each to the M. And you can see here that the ratio of the rates is 2. The ratio of the uh, concentrations of NO2 minus is also 2 both again raised to the power of m. All right, so 2 equals 2m equals implies then that m is going to be 1. Then to find the order with respect to the cation, we set up the ratio between experiment 3 and 2, plug in the data for the rates, plug in all the data here for the concentrations of the ammonium cation and the NO2 minus, and once again, stuff is going to cancel out the K's cancel out, the 0.1 to the M's cancel out, and I can isolate the effect of the reaction rate on the order of NH4 plus the N value. And this is getting kind of boring, unfortunately. It keeps coming out to 1. Now, that's not always going to be the case. 
what you might see sometimes is you might see that the ratio of the rates is equal to 4, and then you have a doubling of the concentrations to some unknown order x. So in this case, you'd have a second order um, power for whatever reagent you might be talking about. So I'm just kind of quickly sketching out what it might look like if it was some other order other than first order. So then we have, the, we have in this case, two-thirds of our rate law. I now know that this reaction is first order with respect to the NH4+, plus, first order with respect to the NO2-. minus. What I still have to solve, and I'm going to leave it up to you to overtly do this, I have to solve for the value of the rate constant K, and I also need to solve for the units of K. Just remember a couple of basic ideas when you solve for the units. Rates are usually given in something like molar per time, let's say it's molar per second, and then concentrations of course are given in molar. So in order to solve for the um, <clears throat> for the units of K, I'm going to have two molars on the right, a molar per second on the left, and so you should hopefully be able to do the dimensional analysis to not only solve for K, but also give me units of K. I'll tell you right now, the single most common mistake we see when students solve for these differential rate laws isn't so much getting the orders wrong, because that's not terribly difficult. It's also not solving for k incorrectly, because again, that's some fairly straightforward algebra. What usually happens is students get lazy or they forget to give me units for k. Never forget k's have units, and those units will change depending upon the overall order of your particular reaction. So that's a second example of going through experimental data to, to derive a differential rate law. Where we're going to head next we're going to talk about the integrated rate law next, and we're going to do a little bit of calculus. Till next time.